Hiya folks, welcome back. I know a lot of people have expressed an interest in learning how to use SketchUp for 3D design software and I know a lot of people are quite intimidated by it. So I've been wanting to put together a little video for a little while just to help you get started with the absolute, absolute basics of SketchUp. SketchUp is such a useful program to have as part of your toolkit because you can use it for everything from designing an individual piece of furniture through to designing room layouts and like room designs and interior design all the way through to architectural design and landscape design and all sorts of things. Once you understand the basics of using SketchUp, you will never use pen and paper again for designing stuff. Even if I'm just rearranging a room in the house now, I'll do it on SketchUp first just to see what it's going to look like. So this is only for absolute noobs with SketchUp, people who have literally never used it before, and hopefully this will help you get started. Right, here we go. So this is SketchUp version 8, and I'm using version 8 because it's free for commercial use, and I've posted an article all about that over on my Patreon if you want to know a little bit more about that. If you're wanting all of the new bells and whistles of SketchUp, then obviously go for a newer version, but I'm quite happy with what version eight can do. It does everything that I need it to do, but you're not gonna be able to do things like make use of the 3D warehouse where you can like import models from the internet and stuff because this version is just far too old to do that. But I'm just gonna show you everything on version eight. It's a very commonly used version of the program. Pretty much anything that you can do on here, you should be able to do on newer versions as well. So the only things that we're gonna do today, we're gonna draw a cube and we're gonna have a little bit of a play around with it. So for a start, obviously this is our main drawing area that we've got here. This bottom right area we're gonna use a lot in the future. This is our measurement box. Anything to do with measurements ends up popping up in this little bottom right hand box down here. We're not gonna use that today at all. We've got all the different tools and things down the left hand side. We're not gonna use that at all. I'm gonna get you using shortcut keys from square one. If you rely on clicking things on this left hand panel, I guarantee you it'll take you much longer to do stuff on SketchUp than it would to just do it on pen and paper. You've got to get used to using shortcut keys. So I'm gonna take you through the keys that we're gonna to use today. So first of all, your mouse, and you're gonna need a mouse with a scroll wheel on it because the scroll wheel is gonna zoom you in and out. So just roll the scroll wheel in and out on the mouse and you'll find that that'll zoom in wherever your cursor is currently located on the page. So if your cursor's over here, it'll zoom in more on the kind of right. If your cursor's over here, it'll zoom in more on the left. If you just switch to the pointer tool and you do that by pressing the space bar, in the pointer tool mode, that's what you're gonna use for like selecting different things on the screen. If you drag from left to right, it'll select whatever is inside that box. So the thing that you're selecting has to be completely inside that box for it to be selected. Whereas if you drag from right to left, you see we get these little dotted lines instead of a, a solid line. Look at that again. So left to right, we've got the solid line. Right to left, we've got the dotted line. And if you drag right to left, it'll select whatever that box touches. So the thing that you're selecting doesn't need to be inside the box. As long as that box is touching it somewhere, it'll be selected. As I say, we'll come back to that. Let's have a quick chat about the only shortcut keys you're gonna to need to know for this video. We've already talked about the space bar. That puts you into the pointer tool mode. And that's probably gonna be the most commonly used tool on SketchUp. The next two absolute essentials that you need to know. Control Z or Command Z to undo and Control Y to redo. So if you make a mistake, Control Z to undo what you've done. Then your main functional shortcut keys that you're gonna use in today's video are gonna be O for the orbit tool, 
H for the hand tool, R for the rectangle tool, and M for the move tool. So make a note of all of those shortcut keys. Pause the video now, write them down on a piece of paper. If you write them down, it'll help you to remember them. So don't just print them out, write them down. There's gonna be a load more shortcut keys to remember in future videos. So you need to try and commit these to memory. Oh, and by the way, if you end up with loads of like little boxes and things down the right hand side here, there's all sorts of things to control like materials and components and different styles that you're using and stuff like that. And they tend to open up around the screen. For the minute, just close all of those. We're not gonna use those at the minute and it's just gonna complicate matters. So we want a nice blank screen to work from. First thing we're gonna do, hit R on the keyboard, R for rectangle, and you'll see you get this little pencil. And we're just gonna draw a rectangle anywhere on the screen. You can do it from the origin point here. The origin is where all of your X, Y, and Z axes all cross each other, but you don't have to do it from there. You can do it literally anywhere. Let's do it over here. There's a rectangle. So all I'm doing, you can drag right to left or left to right. Makes no difference for drawing a rectangle. There we go, we'll do a few of them. By the way, these axes here, so you've got your green and red, which are kind of your left and right and backwards and forwards, depending on what way you're looking at things. And you've got your blue axis, which is up and down. So you need to get used to kind of interpreting these axes because you're gonna work out what way round you are by looking at these. So to draw the rectangle, all, all I'm doing is clicking and dragging. Look at that. Can you see how sometimes it's trying to draw in, in a different orientation? That's because it's trying to follow a different axis. Now, for the minute, we're gonna do this as like a flat rectangle on the ground. If it does start to try and do one, like a vertical one like that, just have a play around. It tries to kind of take a guess of what orientation you want stuff drawn, depending on kind of where you are on the page and stuff like that. So let me just get rid of all of this. Remember, space bar, and then I'm gonna draw what I was saying before, if I draw a box around all of that, you see how it selects it all? Now if I draw a box around this, these ones here, now look, we've selected lines in the middle here, but we've not selected that whole rectangle because the box didn't go around the whole thing. Now if I go from this side, look, it's selected all of it because the box was touching all of those things. But if I drag from left to right, look, it only takes the things that were inside the box. So that's quite an important one to know. I'm gonna get rid of all of this for now. One other thing when you're drawing a rectangle, you can either click and drag like that, or you can click and then click again to stop your drag point. So you've got that option of either click and drag where you hold your finger on the button until it's the size you want. That's generally the way I would do it. Or you can Click, move the cursor, and then click again. Clicking and dragging is gonna be quicker. So, we've got a rectangle here. So now, all you're gonna do is hit P on the keyboard for push-pull. And now, click on the surface of your rectangle, and just drag it up. And look at that, we've made a cube. Simple as that. Now, if you take that top face and drag it back down, and keep going all the way down. You can drag it out to the bottom as well. It really doesn't make any difference. Now, the only thing is now you can't get to that bottom face to bring it back up again. So how do you do that? Well, hit O for the orbit tool. And now, if you click and drag around the page, just do it slowly. You can get to anywhere you like on that model. And between the orbit tool and the H for the hand tool, that's gonna be mostly how you move around in SketchUp to get to different places. There are a few other ways of moving around your model, but O and H are gonna be your main ones. So O to orbit around, H to kind of pan around with the hand. So if I orbit to the bottom, P for push-pull, and let's push that all the way back upwards again. 
just clicking and dragging with the push pull tool to get back up to the top. O for orbit and then that's us back in a normal kind of position there. Now from this point if we go on to P for push pull can you see how when we hover over this one of the faces turns that kind of bluey colour it gets kind of highlighted. Well whichever face gets highlighted that's going to be the face that you're going to be doing something to. So with the push pull tool if I'm over this side I can push and pull it that way. If I'm over this side I can push and pull it that way. Now what I'd like you to switch to now is the move tool M because I want to show you what happens when things go wrong because if you understand how things can go wrong in SketchUp then it becomes a little bit less intimidating for making things go right again. Watch what happens with the move tool if I click on this corner. What do you think is going to happen? Whoa! So what I'm doing here is I'm moving that corner. I'm not moving the, the whole cube thing. I'm moving just that corner. Control Z to undo. Likewise, what if I'm on that line? What do you think is going to happen? Look at that. If you want to make a wedge type shape, that's how you would do it. But look, I'm moving in and out and all sorts. So you've got to be careful with how you use these sort of tools. We'll come back to that in a little bit more detail later on. Undo. Likewise, if I'm on that face, it's kind of working like push-pull. But look, we're turning it into a weird parallelogram rhombus thing. We're basically making a complete mess of the cube. So if you're on a move tool... Bear in mind, this is the sort of damage that you can end up doing to a model. So, you're generally not going to be moving anything until you've turned this into an object, because normally you're going to be wanting to move the whole thing. It's very rare. There are situations where, as I say, if you want to make like a wedge shape or, or whatever, there are situations where you might want to just move one edge. But generally speaking, you're going to want to move the whole thing. Now, obviously, what you could do, spacebar to deselect, draw a box around it, then hit M for move, and then you can move it around that way. That is one way of doing it. It's still a bit risky because if you accidentally deselect, and just to deselect, just click on any blank area of screen. And if you go back to the move tool, as I say, you can end up back into making all sorts of weird shapes. Look at that, you can end up crossing it over and basically just destroying whatever you're currently working on. So instead of that, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into an object or a component. And to do that, all you do is you triple click on it. So watch this. We're going to click on it three times. And you see how that selects everything? So if you click on it once, it just selects the top face or, or whatever you're currently over. Like, for example, if you're on that line, it would just select that line. If you click on it twice... It selects that thing plus everything that thing is touching. So, for example, if I click on that line, if I now double click on the line, it's selecting the line and these two faces. Or if I click on this face twice, it's selecting the face and the lines around it. You need to kind of get used to the fact in SketchUp that everything is made up of lines and faces. And you can have situations where you've got the lines and no face. Watch this. If I just click on that and click delete. Look, we've made a hollow box now. I go to the orbit tool. So I've deleted the face. I haven't deleted the lines, but I've deleted the face. I don't want to do that. We'll go back to the normal pointer tool. And instead we're going to triple click. And triple click will select the whole object. And then... We're going to turn it into a component. And to do that, we press G. You can kind of think of G for group, although a group is a different thing in SketchUp. So, but G is the default shortcut key for that. And you can see it says create component. And it is actually good practice to give the component a name. So we'll just talk, call this cube, even though it's not technically a cube because we haven't measured the sides, but I'm, I'm calling it a cube. 
You'll see why that's useful to give it a name later on. We'll do create. Now, if we just single click on this, you see we can't select any face or any line. It selects the whole thing because it's one entire object now. So now if we go to the move key, M for move, watch this. So now, whether we pick it up on a corner or a face or a line, it moves the whole object around. Now watch out if you get this shape popping out. That's a rotate function. We're not going to get into doing the rotate function yet. But look, that lets you rotate stuff. There's much better ways of rotating things, so don't use that for rotation. If you see that pop up, just move to a different area so that you don't accidentally rotate the thing. Now, what happens if you do want to push pull one of these sides and you can't now? Let's say you've, you've made your cubey thing and you've decided, oh, it's not quite the right shape. I want to make this a bit longer. So, because this is now an object, you need to get inside the object. And to do that, we'll go back to the point there, spacebar, and this time just double click on the object and that takes you inside it. So we're now back. This is kind of back to the way we were before as if you hadn't created the object in the first place because you're now inside the object. So if now I hit on P for push pull, now we're back to that thing where we can move a face. If I do M for move, we're back to that city. So you haven't lost the ability to do this. It's just we're now editing inside the object. And you can see because it's got this dotted line all the way around it. Spacebar to get back to point there. Now to get out of the object, just press escape key. And that takes you back to normal again. So you can kind of see between the escape key and the space bar, those are two very commonly used keys to get out of what you're currently doing. So space bar takes you out of whatever tool that you're in and takes you back to a pointer. And escape takes you out of an object if you're inside an object by double clicking on it. So escape takes you back to normal again. Right, so you've got your cube on the screen there. What we're going to do now is we're going to make another cube and we're going to join onto this cube. And you're going to join it on, on this bottom right hand corner of this cube. We're going to join it there. So, half a rectangle, let's make another cube. Drag it out. P for push pull. We'll make this one a bit smaller. Spacebar, triple click. G, we'll call this small cube create. And what we're going to do, we're going to join these two together. So we're going to get that corner on that corner. So M for move. Now, how do you think you're going to get that to perfectly be on that? If you move it from this face, look, we're like inside it and all sorts of things have gone horribly wrong there. So whenever you're moving an object around, think about where that object needs to end up. So we want to end up on that corner. So in order to move it to that corner, where do we want to pick it up from? We want to pick it up from that corner. If we wanted that corner to go onto there, you'd pick it up from that corner. And then, look, we should be able to snap it on. Now, we're in a slightly different plane here. If we just use the orbit, we'll, you'll see what I mean. You see that cube's actually lower down than that one. So that can sometimes happen. Don't panic. Let's get it vaguely close first of all. M for move. We're going to try. Sometimes it'll just snap on. Depends how far off you are. You see how it just jumped onto it there? But if we end up like in a really weird plane like over here somewhere, you might find that that won't want to just snap in place. So sometimes you have to get it vaguely close and then do another move just to get it snapped into place. You see how it just jumps on? That's what we're wanting. So if you've done that and you've managed to get that corner snapped onto that corner and you can zoom in just to double check, there should be no gap there. That is absolutely joined together there. Likewise, what if you want to move it onto this back corner here? How are you going to do that? Well, you're not going to pick it up by the face because again, you've got no kind of reference point. So to move it onto that back corner, 
what's the corner that's going to be joined on? It's going to be this corner here. So pick it up from that, click, move it over, it's snapped on, you can see it's snapped in place. And that's it, done. And again, as with all of this, you can click and drag and move stuff around, or you can click once, move it, and then click again to stop moving it, if that makes sense. So that tends to be quite a common way of working in SketchUp. So from that, you should have worked out how to create a couple of kind of cubey things and join them together. Make a few more just to get used to it. R for rectangle, P, push, pull it. Don't forget to make it into a component. Spacebar to get the pointer tool, triple click. G, we'll call this another cube, create. We'll lock that onto that top corner. M for move. We're going to pick it up by that. Uh, let's see. If, see, here's a one where it's not behaving and it's not quite getting on. Now, what you can do, we can switch to the orbit tool while we're in the middle of moving something. Look, O for orbit. You see how it's in actually a completely different plane. And that becomes more obvious when you start looking around. So, back to the move tool. You see, we're back into moving it. Let's pick it up by that corner again. There we go, we've got it. You'll get used to that, just have a play around and you'll get used to how stuff kind of interacts while you're moving stuff around in a, a 3D kind of plane. We'll add one more on the top here. R for rectangle. P for push-pull. Make a kind of flat rectangular box thing. Spacebar to deselect, triple click, G, we'll call this um, rectangle, rectangle box. Zoom out a little bit. Remember, get used to using that scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out. O to have a look around. H for your moving around with the hand. So there you go. We've made a kind of weird boxy cubey shape. One of the reasons for always giving components a name is because, just let me show you this quickly, the dimension tool, which will not come on to today, but the dimension tool is really, really handy. Um, and if you're going to be dimensioning things up, you see, look, I can snap onto these edges and automatically just put dimensions everywhere. And one of the things that you might want to do is also label things. And if you're labeling things, you can do that with a, this text tool here. And watch, if I label this, it's automatically come up with the name of the object. Now, by the way, in this situation, we're not going to press the space bar to get back to the pointer tool, because if you do, obviously, we're going to lose the text. So instead, this is probably one of the few situations where you're going to actually click on the pointer tool instead. Normally, it would just be space bar. This is one of the situations where you wouldn't use the space bar to get back to pointer. But if I show you that again, text tool, look, it just automatically comes up with the the name for everything. And that can be really handy when you've got a final model and you're dimensioning everything up and you're adding a few labels to explain what various bits of it are. It's just good practice, really, to try and name your components from square one. It'll save you a lot of time later on. I'm going to get rid of all these labels. You see, this is a situation where... Look, I can't select that by doing a left to right drag, but if I do a right to left drag, that selects the line and the text, so I can just delete. Same with that. Same with the dimensions. This dimension that I can't do that with because that, if I do a left to right drag, it's going to select everything around here that that's kind of touching. It's going to select that object and that object. I should be able to do a right to left drag though, and that can get it. Because remember, these are components, so you would have to drag a box all the way around them to select them on a left to right drag. So the last thing I want to show you, if you want, you can save that and you come back to it, but I'm just going to delete everything and just start again. I want to show you how you can make slightly more exotic shapes by not creating a component until slightly later on in the process. So we'll go back to the rectangle tool, R for rectangle, 
draw out a shape, P to push, pull it, and we're going to make another cube. Now, what if you want to make a cube with a hole going through it? So remember, we've not turned this into a component yet, so we've got a bit more flexibility of what we can do with it. R for rectangle, and we'll draw a rectangle on any one of these faces. Let's put it on this face here. And now, P for push-pull. And now look, we can move this bit in and out. Or we can move this bit in and out. Or we can move this bit. Let's see what happens. Look, we can't go past that because it's hitting this bit. So that's a really handy kind of feature to make use of because it means that you can just turn a solid object into a hollow object very easily just by drawing a shape on it. Let's just orbit round a little bit. P to push, pull. And if you push all the way at the back, it'll eventually, it'll get rid of it completely. And you want to, you see where it says, on face. On face basically means it's matching it up to the end side of that square thing. If you keep going it'll come all the way out the back, look. It's come all the way out the back of that object, but if we say on face, look, it's got rid of it completely. So, oh, remember we've not created a component yet, so if we go into the move tool we can make a horrible mess of this. Again, sometimes that can be handy. We've created a kind of weird bird box type thing. But look, we're at a funny angle there. Look, we could turn this thing on the side here into a brick. Watch this. Half a rectangle. P to push pull. And then look, we can just kind of do that and turn it into a weird kind of... brick type shape. Anyway, you get the general idea. So just bear in mind, you can draw any shape on any other shape and add or subtract that shape from the thing that you're on, as long as you haven't already turned it into a component. And even if you have, you can double click to get into the component and then edit within the component and still make those sort of changes. So there you go. Hopefully that's a starting point for you. Now we have barely scratched the surface but all I wanted to cover off was really getting used to using the orbit tool and the hand tool to move around, the scroll wheel for zooming in and out and making use of the rectangle tool, the push-pull tool and the move tool because just with those three or four different shortcut keys you can do a lot in SketchUp. Have a play, get used to it Make lots of mistakes. Don't try and make anything too complicated yet. Just get used to using all those different shortcut keys. And maybe next time we'll try and make something a bit more advanced and we'll start making use of measurements and a few of the other tools for actually making something that's of some practical benefit. Now, I need you to do me a favor. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna be making a part two of this video yet because I don't know if anyone's going to find these useful or whether there's even an, an audience for this sort of stuff. I've struggled to find videos that really explain stuff from the absolute beginner level. So if you'd like me to make a part two, please pop it in the comments below and let me know. And also let me know if there's any specific things that you'd like me to cover or anything in this video that you haven't understood then please let me know. And also, if you've tried doing everything I've told you in this video and you've run into problems, let me know about that in the comments as well. And if I do make a part two, and if there's enough interest to do a part two, then I'll cover off any of those questions in the next video. If you're new to the channel, a massive welcome to you. I hope you found that useful. I shall see you next time.